Today's Super Sports presents NCAA Lacrosse. The third ranked Hobart Statesmen, the defending National Division III champions against the Syracuse Orange men here in the Carrier Dome. Well, lacrosse bragging rights in upstate New York for the moment belong to Cornell University. However, anytime Syracuse and Hobart get together, it is really more than just a game. Hi again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulcher. There's always a sideshow or two going on in the stands. The Hobart fans and the Syracuse fans have their own battle between them. But on the field, this is a game that looms as nothing to lose for Hobart and a lot for Syracuse on the line. Syracuse has got to find some momentum. They lost against Cornell. They gave up a lot of goals. I think their confidence was shaken. Uh, they lost a goalie in practice, Matt Palum, who had done well for them. They were pleasing. He was only a freshman, but he's out. That made their goalie question a lot easier to answer. Unfortunately for them, they don't have to worry about it because he's hurt. He's out for three or four weeks. But they've got to get some momentum back both offensively and defensively today, Dave. Each team has suffered a very disappointing home defeat. We did the game earlier this year in which Hobart was uh, upset handily by Ohio Wesleyan. And, of course, Syracuse suffered the same fate against Cornell in losing 19-6. And Hobart brings in a defensive unit that in the past has risen to the occasion against Syracuse, and they're anchored by Tim Clark. Well, Tim Clark, number 34, we're looking at Coach Yurick, but that's Tim Clark right there out of Henninger High School. He really had a knee blown out completely. He's back. They call that a miracle recovery. He's a good defenseman, but, you know, more importantly, he really leads the statesman emotionally. Uh, this week in practice and after their loss, he was the guy that Coach Yurick said got them back together and got their heads together playing lacrosse again. On the off offensive side of things, uh, Hobart has the attackman of the year from Division Three in Ray Gilliam. Well, Ray Gilliam's super uh, – they really feel, uh, Syracuse feels, that he's as good a tack man uh, as there is around. Coach Simmons said uh, he's best bar none, Division One, Division Three doesn't make any difference. So Gilliam is certainly somebody Syracuse has got to worry about from the uh, Hobart's offense, and uh, he's just a super, super kid. And from Hobart's side, they'll have to uh, be concerned with Todd Curry from Syracuse. He has taken 70 shots more than twice as much as anybody else on the Syracuse team. I think they depended on him a little bit too much in the Cornell game. They're going to look for a little more balance, but you really can't go wrong with Todd Curry having the ball. Uh, I think that uh, he definitely is a key. Uh, if he can get going, but also give the ball off and let some other guys get going offensively, you're going to see a different Syracuse offense. That's what I, I believe they have to get going today. Now, Dale, a couple of weeks ago, Roy Simmons made a change in the Nets. He departed from the fifth-year uh, senior in Jim Guyry, went to the freshman Matt Palum, Palin played well a game or two, then was injured, so it's back to Guyry today, and he has proven in the past he can get the job done. Yeah, Jim Guyry is, is no rookie in the cage. That 36 square feet behind him, he's been there before. He's very experienced. I think he was down a little bit after he got replaced by Palin, but uh, he definitely is somebody that the kids have confidence in, I think, and uh, he needs a little confidence himself. The other question is, can the Syracuse defense play well in front of him, not only play well defensively, but make things happen? Well, some people feel that maybe they've been a little lackadaisical. I don't know, you know, not being at practice every day. But one thing you're right, they have to do is it's not just enough to play defense. What they did in the past with Sheen and Desco is to knock the ball down, start a fast break, do something that really creates an unsettled situation. They haven't done it this year, and that's the real difference, I think, defensively. The start of the game, the opening couple of minutes will be crucial, as we've seen in that Ohio Wesleyan game for Hobart and the Cornell game for Syracuse. Whoever grabs the early momentum, could hold the key to the rest of this game. We'll be back with the starting lineups and the opening face-off, and that'll be important, too, right after this. Now look at the starting lineup on the attack for Hobart. Number 12, Tom Gravani, seven goals, 13 assists. Scott Braden, number 44 goals, one assist. Ray Gilliam, Division Three Attackman of the Year in 1986. 17 goals and 13 assists for Hobart. And on the midfield, Malcolm Anderson, one goal, no assists. Ray Tiny Crawford, faceoff man, has won 69% of his faceoffs, no goals and three assists. And Skip Darden, six and two. The Hobart defense, anchored by Devin Arkison, also back from injuries. Number 34, Tim Clark, and Peter Bennett playing on defense for the Statesmen of Hobart. In front of goalie David Maxwell, who stopped 69% of the shots, allowed seven and a half goals per game. Dave Urich is the Hobart coach. And for Syracuse on attack, number five, Tom Nelson, 11 goals, nine assists. Number three, Gordy Mapes, 11 and seven. And number 11, John Zilberti, seven goals and 10 assists. The Syracuse midfield consisting of number 13, Rhett Cavanaugh, seven goals and five assists. Number 16, Todd Curry, 13 and five. He's taken 70 shots. More than twice as many as any other Syracuse player. Pat Donahue, one goal and one assist. Starting defense for Syracuse, Dan Pratt, 
Nowhere number 36, number 18, Jim McNamara, and number 31, Mike O'Donnell. They were tested by Cornell. They'll be tested again today against Hobart. And the goalie, Jim Guyery, who stopped 46% of his shots, allowing 14 goals a game. It has become a traditional rite of spring in upstate New York, the Hobart-Syracuse lacrosse game. And there are few, if any other, rivalries in college sports in which a Division III school goes up against a Division I school with as much attention focused on the game as this one. And last year, Hobart ended a four-year reign by Syracuse. Today, they'll be meeting for the 72nd time. And right now, out on the field, the starting teams are eyeballing one another, as are the coaches. Roy Simmons, Jr. of Syracuse on the left, and Dave Urich on the right. Seven years, the NCAA has conducted a Division III lacrosse championship in seven years in a row. Hobart has won it. Right now, they're ranked number three in Division Three. Syracuse number seven in Division I. Tiny Crawford out on the field. A key face-off man for Hobart College against Pat Donahue of Syracuse. Hobart is wearing the orange jerseys. Like Syracuse, they share the same colors. Donahue and Crawford. In pursuit is Tiny Crawford, and Hobart wins the first faceoff, and this crowd is loud and into it off the opening face. Skip Darden, number 28, with the ball. Played by Donahue. He's into the box. Now Malcolm Anderson comes on. He's being checked out there by Chris Burt. He knocks the ball away. They can't play it on the far sideline. Syracuse gets it. Well, that's the kind of thing we talked about at the top of the show. Make things happen. Make it happen early defensively. Take the opportunities away from Hobart. It's early, but that's the first thing I think that Syracuse had to do, and they did it. Hobart will apply some pressure. Now, when we saw the Cornell game, they had a little problem clearing. They started with the goalie. And they're starting now with the defenseman, and they have no problem. And they go down to this side to Gary Gate coming in for a, perhaps a shot. He comes in, and Maxwell, he scores. Very quickly out of the box, Gary Gate, the freshman out of Brentwood Bay, British Columbia, scores after just 37 seconds. And he beats Dave Maxwell out of Bishop London High School, the Hobart goalie. Well, Gate just took it all the way down. He got the, the clearing pass at the midfield line and just took a left-handed shot. Nobody got a real hand on him. He went all the way down unmolested. Maybe somebody should have put him down. Nobody really picked him up cleanly. And we have a new face-off man for Hobart. Looks like it's still Pat Donahue for Syracuse, it is. And the face squirts back in the vicinity of Syracuse, and the Orange men do get it. On the faceoff was Dave Ralph, second midfielder. Here comes Rhett Kavanaugh, Syracuse with the early momentum. Kavanaugh dishing it off. Nelson behind the Mapes, out in front is Zilberti. And Mapes backs off on the play. Sends it back now to Donahue. Lots of movement out there. Syracuse had an unsettled. Nice job. Now they're going to settle it down. They want a settled offense. They put it in the stick of Rhett Kavanaugh. Looking to pick up a screen as he moves. Changing directions for the low shot. He scores. And this can be demoralizing for the visiting team, Hobart in this case, as they're now 2 0. A minute 15 in. It's not a heck of a lot of goals, but they've got the crowd right in an early, Dave, and they, they have not had a lot of difficulty in scoring. And you'll see that they got the ball across, and Kavanaugh just one hopped it past Maxwell. Maxwell kind of screened, did not have a good chance to get a beat on the ball. Crawford back in, in the face. A couple of stunned Hobart fans early on. Syracuse 2 0. Minute 15 in. Back on the face, Tiny Crawford and Donahue. All right, Crawford is a real battler in there on those faceoffs. Kavanaugh goes high for it. In pursuit is number 16, Gravanti, Mike Guy rather. And it goes out of bounds. It belongs to the Statesman. Good hustle, Syracuse really moving on the ball. It went out of bounds. It'll be Hobart ball, but Syracuse playing with a lot of excitement, a lot of determination. Rick Ram and Mike Guy, Dave Ralph, second midfield for Hobart. They're on right now. With the ball is 16, Michael Guy. Played loosely by O'Donnell. Giving it up to Graham. Ralph is cutting toward the net. Can't get the pass. Gilliam behind the attack man of the year. Here's Guy again. Going by Burt. Doesn't nice get a shot. shot as McNamara put the shoulder on him and knocks it out of bounds. 
Large get it. Great camera shot there, showed you exactly what was happening. And you saw Syracuse come out, be aggressive, take the body, knock the ball down. Here's the end zone, look at it. There's Burt up with a stick. Now they're gonna come out. McNamara comes all the way out to jump. And when he jumped, unlike against Cornell, he did it with no second thought and knocked the ball down. Syracuse up, turnover for the Orange. And again, they try that play, sneaking uh, Gary Gate on. This time he was guarded there by Will Schmidt and Matt Torglin. Now they redirect it to Jim Geary, the Syracuse goalie, sends to the far sidelines. Syracuse leading it two to nothing, bad pass. Intercepted by Hobart, and their fans come to life with every rush. Hobart looks to get it into the stick of Torgler. They do. Hook checked away by Dan Pratt. Bouncing ball at midfield. Hobart's got it momentarily. Torgler is dumped. And Syracuse throwing bodies around liberally. An offsides violation, I believe, as Hobart tried to come upfield. We'll see what the horn is. That, that horn doesn't signal offsides. That's the official's call. We'll see ball on the ground. Syracuse up with it momentarily, goes up in the air. Lots of intensity out there as Neil Alt, the ball number eight, but the ball finally ended up in a Hobart stick, but you can see Syracuse all over, big stick middies down. Probably and it was an inadvertent horn. And, and Hobart will have the ball. Down two to nothing. 12.21 to go first quarter. Dave Yurick with an explanation on the sideline. Michael Guy. Guy against Chris Burt. Finally got the step on him, then backed off. Working on him again and taken away by Burt. And Guy dumps that's in. A, he yeah, got the stick a, under the legs. That's a push or a hold. Syracuse a hold. will get it. That's the kind of thing we were talking about at the top of the show. That's what they have to do defensively. I thought they did not do well against Cornell. They made some attempts, but so far it's working. They're being very aggressive, but very intelligent, and it's working out. We'll see what happens on the replay. Comes across. That's Michael Guy, and Burt goes back. Watch Burt. Eventually, then he'll come around and take the ball out. Hobart now up with it themselves. Clark across the midfield, and there's a break. Jimmy Clark. Getting it ahead to Devin Arkinson. He did not play in that early season loss. A shot in Gary down for the save. Important on that first save. Gary's outlet intended for O'Donnell. Can he keep it in bounds? Yes. No. Well, I'll tell you right now, you can tell the noise level. You could hardly hear the whistle. There's a lot of fans excited about this Hobart SU game. Skip Darden on the far side. He'll trigger it in. Rapidly played first quarter so far. Syracuse up two to nothing. Uh, Gilliam's going to take the ball behind. There's 23. Gary Gate, Rhett Kavanaugh have the early goals. Syracuse's Pratt is tested, and Gary took it right off the chest. In pursuit is Darden. Tiny Crawford went down, raked it in. Only for a second. That's a real scrum down and there. And here goes O'Donnell, sends it back to Gary. Will the arms break? They got a man streaking at midfield. Burt, they couldn't find him. Gary's going to need help. Gary's in trouble, and he gives it up just in time. There you go. That's the pass that they got to make. Twice last week against Cornell. Syracuse got burned on that. Now Todd Curry for the first time. Curry. Good change of direction. Curry is strong. He's quick and he's got a hard shot. And that one bounces over Maxwell. Race to the end line. Syracuse keeps it. Arkison thought he was there. But he Zilberti was beat Zilberti. up to the spot. John Zilberti who may be doubled. No, they're going to change off on him now. They're going to put Arvin Titus, who had a great game against Ohio Wesley, and is going to be on Zilberti as there's a timeout. They're going to change on the official's timeout. Chip Arvin Titus, who played at Baldwinsville High School, is a quarterback there. John Zilberti out of West Tennessee against Tim Clark. Syracuse sends it back outside. Looking to go up 3 to nothing. Kavanaugh. Zilberti, he likes to work one on one. The quickest Syracuse player. Arvin Titus matched right up with him. Very aggressive. Now to cap to uh, Paul Gate, number 39. He shoots, he scores. Well, I tell you, they got to Maxwell. Maxwell should have had that. That shot was not all that hard. I mean, it's easy to say from up here, but what? The point yeah, is that he's Maxwell he's really had a chance to pick up his defense, make a save. Watch. He's not screened. 
It just oh, takes a hop, and I mean, unassisted. it's tough to play down there in the turf, but that's the kind of things that will pick up his defense. What happened last week, Syracuse had the same problem. So the Brothers Gate have scored. Sandwiched around a goal by Rhett Cavanaugh, and it's a 3 0 Syracuse lead. And remember, we told you about the start and the early momentum being very critical in the game. Peter Allen, Chris Rossi on, and Pat Donahue, but it's Crawford who wins the faceoff, gives it up now to Ray Gilliam. Crawford made a fake like he was going to go off. Now he is heading off. And they get Ralph on, and now here comes Rick Graham. Action in the stands. Michael Guy. Hobart down 3 0. Rick Graham feeding behind the cage. Gilliam. Gilliam works one on one. Gilliam reverses. His shot is wide. Syracuse in pursuit of the rebound. Scaramazzino wins it for the yard. Dan Pratt on that last looked like he got beat, but he came back, stayed with it, didn't give up on it and really changed the direction of the shot and Syracuse up with it. And will now have a chance to get down and get another one against Hobart, 9.37 left. Watch Pratt, 36, looks like he's in trouble. Watch, now he turns around, good defense by Pratt. Then the ball goes over the stick of Hobart's and number 40 and that was all there was to it. Braden lost it and Syracuse gets it. And at the last second you see Scaramazzino raises his stick to signal the official, I was there first. 9.20 to go, first quarter. 3 0 Syracuse. Hobart, after losing their first two games, has won four in a row. Peter Allen going by McCormick. He may have a shot, gives it up instead. Open man is Oberti, and it's high. He took what they used to call an Indian shot, started out with those wrists, and it starts out low on the carpet, Dave, and goes high. Last week, Schmoller, the goalie from Cornell, said that he was having such a good day he could see that shot of Zilberti's and Curry's. Tom Nelson has it in his stick. He'll begin to play, gets a pick by Zilberti. He was gonna take it all the way, but he didn't get the shot away. And Mapes goes down. It's up for grabs, the goalie Maxwell has it. Giving it up, Syracuse applying pressure, they're riding. Cross field they go. And the Orange will not concede anything. Nelson. Well, they're changing it to midfield, and they uh, relaxed for a second. Hobart did. And Syracuse got all their people in, and now Hobart like to get their last one in. This game has been played almost exclusively in the Hobart half of the field. 8.25 to go, first quarter, 3-0. Now Rick Ram moving on Chris Badwini. Going by Badwini. Looks to poke it away from behind. Good job by Badwini to catch up. He goes to Michael Guy. Guy for a shot. Two men in the crease. It's in the net. Jim Byrie and Dan Pratt tried to squeeze it, and it's in there for a goal. Good effort on Pratt's part. A nice shot. They got it down there in the confusion, and it was stopped momentarily. Let's see if we can see what happens. There's Burt. There's the shot. The initial save. It oh! It got stuck momentarily in Pratt's shorts. And then it fell and landed on the line and just went in. All it's got to do is pass that imaginary line. Doesn't have to hit anything. Tiny Crawford battling on the faceoff. And Matt Torgler pops it in the air with Curry contending. And we get a, an illegal procedure call. That'll give it to Hobart. I didn't see exactly what happened. We look at the early stats. Five shots for Syracuse. They've got three goals. Shots for Hobart, four shots in, one goal. And a Hobart goal. Malcolm Anderson up ahead to Darden. Nice job by Burke. Anderson gets it back. Michael Guy got an assist on that last goal. Hobart. This is the defensive momentum. Buffing it up to Syracuse, Dan Pratt. Orange checkers, they come across to stay on sides. You got one big stick, Scaramazzino gonna come off down there in the bottom left-hand part of the screen. Hustling over with him is number 30, Crawford. In comes Todd Curry, Rhett Cavanaugh, and now Donahue will come on as well. You talk about matchups, Dave. There's a lot of chess going on out here. And Donahue sneaking in. He'll shoot. Yes. Score! <laughs> Second goal of the year by Pat Donahue, and Syracuse is catching Hobart on the switches. Absolutely right. I don't think that Hobart was ready to play that 
Uh, Tim Clark, I think, a little out of position or a little bit relaxed on that. We'll see on the replay because well, Clark comes out, but they put it right by Maxwell. And Maxwell not getting into any rhythm. He really, uh, as far as saves, he's only got one save. But Syracuse is putting a lot of pressure on him. And it's 4-1. to one. Here's the face again. Donahue is down on the ground. He is not conceding anything lightly. Matt Torgler now wins it for Hobart. Michael Guy calling for it from Gilliam. Gilliam's going to go on Pratt. Brett Kavanaugh heads off. Scaramazzino's coming on. He'll take a run right at Gilliam, who gives it up. Gravani leaving it for Graham. Michael Guy out at the point. He will get it now. Or not, not quite now. There they go to the far side. To Braden. Now Gilliam has it. Jim Guyry calling out the defense. You hear him. He's telling everybody right behind. where everybody else is. Donahue over the top. Took it away and it draws the flag. Either a ward or a hold. It'll cost him some time. 30 seconds for the hold. It looked like he was going to get away with it, but... Watch him go over the head. There he is over the head, Penalty but you can see Syracuse. that he really held up Richard Graham. Ball, ball, number 26, so Donahue will spend 30, 30 seconds in the first man up opportunity holding. of the game. 6.37 to go. It's 4 to 1, Syracuse. A 70 second meeting in a series uh, dominated of late the last couple of years by Syracuse. Although Hobart won it last year. They've won one of the last five. Here's Gilliam. They're doing a good job keeping Gilliam outside. Low shot. Why? Gyrie's going to race back there, but Hobart will keep it. They had uh, Mike Tom Gravani back behind the cage. They do have Gilliam. They started with him behind. Now they, they moved him out at the point on top, and now he's going to go back down and take the ball in from behind along with Joe DeMacco, 22. There's Coach Yurt. 619 left as referee sends Hobart to the end line. Back behind the cage. Now Hobart's Tom Gravani feeds the crease. Up high to get it, Scaramazzino looks to outlet it, shovels back to Gyrie instead. Now O'Donnell in front of official Jake Curran. There's a long pass that they had problems with against Cornell and they settle it right down. Gyrie looking for somebody open, finds Curry who will often run it over. He's going to have a lot of orange around him. Sweep check attempt, unsuccessful. Curry changes directions on a dime, feeding Kavanaugh in a crowd. That time Curry may have been better off taking the shot himself. Somebody's lost a stick. It's Graham and Syracuse keeps it. Curry had all the momentum and then passed it back to Kavanaugh who attracted the crowd. Well, you're right. He might have. I think he might have taken that shot himself. But as we said at the top of the show, they were looking for him a lot last week. I think maybe he wants to see if he can't get rid of it, draw a little bit of defensive pressure, and dump it off. Now Nelson, fake using the screen from Zoberti on the ground, and we get a call that I think will go against Syracuse, and it does. Cross check. So Syracuse will be man down again. Ball gate, Rhett Kavanaugh head off. One minute penalty call against Syracuse. Cross checking. Guard to number five, Tom Shots Nelson. Shots pretty even, Syracuse obviously, 6-5. Six Syracuse has four goals. Hobart won with 5.27 left first quarter. Joe DeMacco brings it up. Dale, next time we get a shot of the Gate brothers, I want to check and see if they wear shoulder pads. Well, they have to wear pads. So. They must wear some awfully small ones. Gravanti exchanging back there with Graham. Now Mike Guy outside tries to nice feed the move. middle. And right there anticipating it was Burke. Really put the hit on Ralph. Here's a shot and Guy saves it, kicks it out. And the Orangemen are pushing the Statesmen around on offense. Well, they want to watch this unsettled situation now. Gilliam Hobart's has it. man up. Open. Gilliam draws the flag, but he gets the goal as well. <laughs> Hold be wiped out by the penalty, but Hobart right back in this one. 
Timeout Syracuse. Now we'll look at it again. Watch Gilliam. There's, There's the, the flag. Hold. He fakes the shot. Uh, what an effort. Timeout taken by Syracuse. They lead it 4 to 2 with 4.41 to go in the first quarter. It looked to me like he might have been in the crease before that ball went in. If that was it, then that, that, that should have been a no goal. But uh, I, that's what Coach Desco, you can't see him. Now, now you see John uh, coming back. But he is out, I'm sure, complaining about the fact that he thought Gilliam was in the crease before the shot. And of course, that would certainly change things around from a replay. That's what it looked like. But of course, we're up here. Out on the field to the left of the Syracuse huddle, Matt Palem conferring with Jim Gary. There's the look, there's the leap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was down in there. I, unless he was unless he was illegally pushed, but they call a hold away from it. So that may remain controversial. And there's Palem who had some advice. The freshman talking to the fifth year senior. And the advice is well taken by Gary. Well, you know, in, in the Cornell game, uh, he was the first one out to talk to Jim, uh, or Gary was the first one out to talk to him, I should say. And it uh, doesn't seem to be any animosity. They just uh, seem to be like pulling together. Dave Yurick now down by a score 4 to 441 left as he looks at the roof of the dome. You don't see very much emotion from uh, either of these two head coaches. A lot of the assistants are uh, the fire and brimstone guys. Designated John Desco for Syracuse. <laughs> It's Crawford on the faceoff for Hobart. And a new faceoff man for Syracuse on that play was Kirk Pratt. This should be off Hobart. Matt Torgler no. is closest to it, and Hobart keeps it. They have a very large contingent here at the Carrier Dome. In fact, Hobart probably has the bigger crowd here than Syracuse. Faceoffs on officially 5-2 now in favor of Hobart. But as I've said before, it's... Not just getting the face off, it's what you do with it after you get it. Tiny Crawford with uh, Malcolm Anderson on the midfield and Skip Darden. Now the starting midfield for Hobart. Scaramazzino really putting the stick on number 36, Alec Anderson. Devin Arkinson with 41. Good change of direction by Gilliam. Pratt is on him. Gilliam continues to work for the shot. Gary saved it. Uh -oh. And Hobart's going to pick up the loose ball in the unsettled situation. They'll try to take the head off Gravani. There's Anderson using his big body. Well, that was a and problem. And overthrowing the more diminutive Tiny Crawford, who gets it back at midfield. And gets a stop on Badwini. Anderson. And now Gravanti. Syracuse being very aggressive, but uh, they were able to get back. Uh, against Cornell, they had some problems of being a little bit over aggressive, maybe then not getting back in position. But Chris Burt, number 33, takes it away, but he can't scoop it. Now it's McNamara, and we get a whistle. Pick. Pick. And you said it. I think Hobart's got quite a crowd here. As they really applauded that call. 322 left, everybody even. Syracuse up by two. Gilliam drawing pressure One on from one Pratt. With Pratt. And Pratt takes it away with a perfectly timed check. Sends it back to Gyron. Almost a dangerous maneuver. Well, he's pretty used to, to getting that. I, I think that. Uh, he feels pretty comfortable in there now. Three minutes to go in this first quarter. And they're, they're, con they're not contesting this. They're letting everybody change on the fly at the midfield. Jim Guyry walking it up. The Hobart midfield of Braden, Guy, and Gilliam. Hobart zoning right there and just letting them come up the field before they break and jump. Curry. Not even the midfield. That was the attack, actually. Yep. Good clear. He's going to get jumped. And here's the gate. Gary Gate. Picked up out of there by Hobart's defense. Maxwell. Pass. May go. Goalie out of the cage. Gordy Mapes is knocked to the side. And now here comes Arkison. Pass break. Arkison getting it ahead quickly. Turning. And now Hobart tries to take advantage of their speed. And Gilliam's going to slow it down. 
Syracuse did a nice job of getting back and stopping the fast break. O'Donnell. Braden. And now Mike Guy. Right behind, right behind, says the goalie, Gyrie. That's And oh. Gyrie's beaten. It's now a 4-3 to three game, and a penalty flag flies. Michael Guy with a goal. Guy beats Gyrie. And it's a 4-3 to three game. Syracuse still leading by one. And they are also going to be manned down for a minute. And that's the kind of mistake that they can ill afford to make. They have looked pretty good, but... To give up a goal and then give up a penalty. That's Curry right there on Guy. And there's the slash oh, right Lord, across the arm. Second one of the game for number 16. Michael, Michael Guy has Guy. his second goal of the game. Oh, it's Michael Guy. Syracuse four and Hobart three. And it is Hobart three. Syracuse Play a game four. against Syracuse. So now not only do they be a man down, they, they aren't even going to get a chance to get the face off. That really hurts. Kirk Pratt trot, trots off. So He's taking the last two face offs, Dale, and now the momentum clearly has shifted to Hobart. Now, if they get a shot off, Jimmy Guyry can come up with a great save or a good save and start him out. I think it would do a lot to pick him up. They have played well, defensive minis and the defense. It is a one minute penalty against Syracuse. Hobart looks for the tying goal. Gravanti, he's going to take it. Off of Pratt. Hit Pratt right in the face mask, I believe. Gravanti gets it back. Dishing off. And they send it outside for the low shot. Guyrie with a good save. And the ricochet to Chris Bird. Back to Guyrie. Yeah, he'll take his time now. Hobart's man up. They should probably go after the ball, but they're going to change now. And the clock will tick on the penalty. Of course, we can't tell from up here how much time is left. Incidentally, on man ups, that's one of three for Hobart. Syracuse has yet to have an opportunity. So now they're all even, Dave. The penalty was up uh, as they did not contest that. And it's in the hands of Rhett Kavanaugh. And the official doing some counting, trying to well, you got, you've got to get bring the it action upfield. going. Yep, you've got to bring it upfield. And Gyrie will really fling it down to the corner and over the head of Tom Nelson. Took an AstroTurf bounce and into the stands. So Hobart will get it back. Syracuse leads it four to three. We have three seconds to go in this first quarter. And that's it. And the end of the first quarter with a score. Syracuse four and Hobart three. Roy Simmons has removed the baseball cap this week. And uh, Syracuse came out fired up, getting two goals in the opening uh, minute 15 seconds to jump to a 2 nothing lead. But Hobart has uh, recaptured some of the momentum at Syracuse four and Hobart three. As we begin this uh, second quarter, here's how they stack up in the Division I poll. Maryland on top, Cornell. Then North Carolina, Hopkins, Brown, Navy, and Syracuse. And the faceoff now for quarter number two. I think that's uh, Symington. James Symington out of England. Syracuse wins the face. Curry in the middle of the field gives it up. Curry hasn't taken a shot yet, has he? I don't believe so. Goal scoring in this game. Gary and Paul Gate, Rhett Cavanaugh, and Pat Donahue. And for Hobart, pair by Guy, one by Gilliam, and a save right there by Maxwell. Zoberti rebound and shovels it wide. Now they got the rebound. You said Zoberti just whipped it on the rebound. There's the stats. Man up goals, one of three, I believe, for Hobart. Faceoffs 6 2, now 6 3. So faceoffs uh, early to Hobart. Syracuse got that one. See if they can cash in on it as they just one on one. Iso wait for a jump. What strength in there, but no shot. And Hobart takes it away. Devin Arkison, fast break by the Statesman. In the middle of the field, Schmidt wanted it. Deflected and gathered in by Gary. And it's in trouble. Nobody's in the cage. 
Diaries hacking after it. Todd Curry is the netminder for the moment. Hobart's going to keep it. Gyrie trying to influence the referee's decision. Skirmazino and Burt now in along with Badwini as the big stick middies get in for Syracuse. Gilliam behind. Ray Gilliam feeding. He's got one goal in the game. Gravati, number 12. Here's Gilliam working his way around the circle. Using that. Gets inside and scores. He played off the body of Dan Pratt beautifully. And he was faced one on one with the goalie. He beat him high into the upper left hand corner. Hobart 4, Syracuse 4. Once in a while, you got to get some help. And here's Pratt. You see, he took him back around the cage. Pratt had to jump over the cage. And now, as he comes back, he just puts it by. And the help came over. They slid late. Gilliam, you can see why Coach Simmons said he is, without a doubt, one of the best attackmen in the country, if not the best. And you see there, he took Pratt back behind twice and then came back using the cage. Tidy Crawford winning the face and outlegging everybody. His shot was deflected from behind. And Gyrie, first man there. Gets it back for the Orange Man. A 4-4 game. Ray Tiny Crawford. He's got to be above 70% now at faceoffs this year. Faceoffs now 7-3 in favor of Hobart. That happened in the Cornell game. Definitely a comfortable pl uh, place to play for Syracuse, but they're going to have to work a little harder this year than they have in the past, I think. And they are playing well so far today. Diary in the middle, threading the needle on the pass to Chris Rossi. Rossi is going to give it up to Peter Allen. Uh, Syracuse is going to have to, they're going to have to play some settled offense now because uh, they're not getting the fast breaks, which that's the, what you have to do. You have to take what you can get. Now they're going to have a settled offense. Neil Alt departed. Gary Gates stayed on. Gordy Mapes against David Kernick. Mapes, good fake. Kernick does a good job. Hard shot Aye. score. Quick release by Gary Gate. I don't think the goalie realized he would fire that ball from where he did as soon as he did. Well, you know, Mapes Gary, made Gary. that play by going back and forth. Now the goalie's got to ribbon his attention on Mapes because each time he goes back and forth, he's taking the defense with him. Then when he does, he sees Gate jump out of the out of the pile and does a quick job of passing. Watch, here comes Gate on the circle. Watch him, bang, bang, right between the two. And of course, Maxwell, the goalie, has to change all of his all of his concentration, and it was too late. Really good point because you saw Maxwell leaning against the pipe, and all of a sudden, that shot was by him to the other side. And from the way he tried to get it, you knew he had been lulled. Real nice set play there. Well, this ought to be interesting. Looks like On a the face, accident. Rossi <laughs> and Neil Ault seeing a lot of playing time and scooping it up and passing it in close. Yeah. And O'Donnell now will hold on for Syracuse. Once again, they're not going to contest this. We'll change it midfield. The big sticks come on for Hobart, and the little sticks or the shorter sticks come on for Eshu. Gate snuck in again. Again, he got the pass near midfield. Here he comes. And he shoots and yes. scores again. He took something off it, and Maxwell's got to be kicking himself on that one. Gary Gate one more time. Syracuse takes a 6 4 lead on an unassisted goal by number 38. Gate started it all off. The key is he snuck in from the sideline, and he didn't get picked up by Kernick until too late. Now it's a fast break. Now it's unsettled, and they still don't get a body on him. And there he just takes it off. And of course, actually, Maxwell had nothing he could do except maybe come out of the goal, but when you do, you're dead. I think he played it the only way he could. Well, there's one reason they didn't get a body on him is because Gary's got a big one of his own, and getting that momentum coming on the field near midfield, they list him at uh, 190 pounds, and he seems bigger and certainly plays bigger. Tiny Crawford now. Syracuse up by two, six to four. Crawford double. Down the sideline, gives it up to Braden. McNamara is on him. Settled. They got him up, but no. Syracuse runs it off. McNamara did a good job along with Chris Rossi. Outside now, Michael Guy. Michael Guy is going to take it, and it's saved out front by Gary. 
Jim Gary sending it back to his defense. Now upfield, Syracuse looking to break. Alt near midfield, awaiting the pass. Now he gets it. And he uses his speed to go by Arkison and knocks it away. And Arkison gets it back. Goes the other way. This is In the middle of Braden. Fast break action, end to end. Michael Guy saw Gilliam cut through. Weak side, Schmidt, one on one. Where is it? Smothered Three bodies. And rolling toward the end line. And out. Obart will keep it. O'Donnell Pratt and the official goalie, Jim Guyrie, all in on that one, and they couldn't get it by the 500 or so pounds of humanity in there. Watch what happens. There's the three men. You know what? Guyrie got a stick on it after all that. He deflected it. Jim Guyrie looking good in the goal, Dave. Here's Ray Gilliam against Pratt again. He overshoots his intended man. Uh, this should be interesting. That was uh, James Bardwell in the game for the first time. Now the whistle at midfield. Who is offside? Offsides. Syracuse. Tom Nelson leaned over and they start right up again. Mike Guy downfield quickly. And now Gilliam again matched up with Pratt. He feeds outside again over the head of his intended man. He was looking for Dave Roth and it was Dave a poor pass too high. One more time they go to Gilliam. You see all the motion there on the crease to the left. And now they've got Gilliam one on one. No help for Pratt. Ball Tried to down. get it to Gravani. That was a tough pass to complete. Gravani and Ralph. Good call. Who's going to make it? Syracuse. They jumped him, but they really did a nice job of getting out there. What Hobart had done is they just set four guys up to the left side of the crease, and then they just had Gilliam come around by the side and what happens is the ball was on the ground they tried to get it to Gravani and this is what happened they just kept playing good defense three on two and the ball off of Hobart Syracuse now back to live action Guyrie going to clear it and Guyrie going on the far side again to his defense back now to Guyrie and Michael Donald's going to get it down here ten minutes to go in the second quarter Syracuse is up six to four Rhett Kavanaugh Looking back to see if anybody's coming on. Donahue's heading toward the sideline. Clark on Kavanaugh. Donahue, low shot. He sensed the goalie was out of the cage. Mapes feeds from behind. Zoberti, yes! What a shot. I didn't think he had an angle on that. Somehow he flew through midair and Woo! beat the goalie, Maxwell. That's a typical Zoberti shot. They haven't been falling much of late. He got there that one. And watch Zoberti. Mapes passes behind, and Zoberti just brings around. Rhett Kavanaugh's there with him, and there he just leaps out in front. What a, he made the angle, Dave. His feet were behind the line, the goal line, and as you said, Dale, he made that angle. Syracuse up by three. We'll be back. And we're back with Syracuse leading by three goals. Hobart number three in Division Three. An a custom spot for them. New goalie in the game for the Statesman as well. Well, I didn't think Maxwell looked uh, like I, I, they thought that maybe they would like to get him in that defensive group, come up with a couple of good saves. And we're going to get a whistle here. Procedure against Syracuse. The new goalie is Randolph. So it, it did not take Coach Urich much time to decide he did the not Hobart like what he was seeing with number 46, Al, Randolph. Al Randolph is a six foot two inch senior out of Cockeysville Maryland so we've got a pair of Maryland goalies in there Guyry from Annapolis here's a shot and a save, save. by Guyry against Skip Darton who worked his way for a free shot from in close nine and a half minutes to go Syracuse by three pressure Guyry nearly blindsided he's going to give it up I think they take it away from him. The cage is open. And the ball is out of bounds. It belongs to the statesman. Well, he did a nice job of just getting the ball out of there. He doesn't see Gravani from behind. And now the ball's down. And as you said, Dave, there was nobody in the cage. But Syracuse now got a three-goal lead. But Hobart has an opportunity. Skip Darden. Jump. 
Yeah, he's jumped it. He got it to Mike Guy. O'Donnell plays Guy, tries to take away the shot. And the rebound may have hit a whole bar man before it went out of bounds. That's no. okay. Yeah, even if it hits the stick, unless you gain control of it, it's still a shot. And you're, he was the closest to it, so it'll remain whole bar ball. But, you know, it's interesting that they that they have put Randolph in uh, this early. You know, usually it takes a coach a half. There's 9.03 left in the second quarter, and they have gotten Maxwell out of there. And he came in without benefit of any warm-up. Not much room on the sidelines for that. Gilliam mishandles it. Pratt has got the tough job of trying to stick with him. He just lost him. And a save, save. by Guyron. Well, you can see that, that Gilliam has got more speed than Pratt. And what he'd like to do is get an ISO over there where he can just go one-on-one -on -one and take him back and forth. What Syracuse has to do is they have to jump. They have to give him some help. But the key is if you jump too soon, he's going to dump the ball off to the man who is now free. So it becomes kind of a, a real cat and mouse game. Anderson had it checked away. And there's a second uh, hit. It's going to be a slash against Chris Burt against Skip Darden. Well, the thought was there, but uh, Burt uh, cleaved him in the head. <laughs> and uh, you can get away with it if it's not quite intentional, but bonk. <laughs> it's like one of those cartoons well, you should have bonk come Spicy out because he really did hit him right in the middle of the helmet. Number 33 for the orange Chris Burt. One minute slashing. So Syracuse now will give up another man up opportunity. This will be the fourth for opportunity for Hobart. They have converted on one so far. Jim Gary having a fine day in the cage for Syracuse. 12 saves. Sneak behind. In close, Gilliam. Well, that certainly wasn't Jim Gary's fault. What a perfect play for Hobart as they're now two of four and the man up goals and that man did a super job. Watch Ray Gilliam because he's all by himself. He breaks from the midfield and as they slid down to play the ball behind. Gilliam is just one on one with 36 square feet. Hobart Ray Gilliam gets his third goal of the game. Ray Gilliam gets his third of the game. And it's a seven to five Syracuse Assist lead. Joe no, DeMarco got the assist. Rhett Cavanaugh tried to feed it in close. Taken away by Arkison of Hobart. Hobart yeah, has Hobart never led or... The game is tied once at four five. for a very short time period. Tiny Crawford on the shake and go. Thinks the better of it initially and gives it up. Now Gravanti. In the corner he goes. And the shot and score, and a great individual effort by Jim Bardwell. And just like that, Hobart is cut into the Syracuse lead. It's down to 7 6. There's the man, James Bardwell, out of Tully, New York. And this is where in the Cornell game, Syracuse, one. I think, lost a little bit of their composure. It's going to tell right James now. It's 7-6. to six. They still got the lead, but the momentum, Dave, obviously has now shifted a bit to Hobart. Face-offs become ever more important. And on that face-off, it is Hobart's three orange shirts there to three for Syracuse. And it's kicked ahead, and Hobart gets it. It's Gilliam. Well, he just... Really sucked that up like a vacuum cleaner. Great Gilliam job. Feeds the weak side. And a great catch by Gravani, but he couldn't get a shot away. O'Donnell's all over him. They've just picked up the pace of this game a notch or two. Well, he's going to need some Gravani help. Gravani looks to give it up. Shoots. Bardwell down there to bother Guyer. Wow, what action. Seven Ooh. minutes. Well, this is a boring game, right? Wow. Second half. Yet to one full. We're still in the first half. Uh, Curry who has had success running it over. Oh, he went right by Bardwell. And Curry carrying it deep. And still carrying it. He's got Donahue in the slot. Oh. Took a little too long to get the shot away. Mike Randolph Sheehan. outletting it for Ralph. Mike Sheehan changed that shot. Actually got a piece of it as they end to end. Mike Ralph carrying it into Syracuse's defensive end. Giving it up to Michael Guy. Rick Graham comes on. Hobart was down three, now they can tie. A game of shifting momentum. 
punches and punches. Isolation again. There is Gilliam again, and it's wide. Rick Rav keeps it in the statesman's possession. Of course, it's tough, you know, with Dan Pratt, as they said, they're going to they're gonna stack everybody over on one side, and, boy, he can't get much help. they got to come a long way, and if they're uh, stacked up on the crease, Gilliam being the player he is, he can give it up, and, uh, boy, they're using that uh, just the way they want to. Bardwell, number five, stays on with Gilliam. Bardwell mishandled that easy pass from Gilliam. And he has it taken away by McNamara. Can he trigger something? No, he's going to settle it down now. They don't want to make a mistake. And instead, he throws it away. Now, that's the kind of thing that gets the Hobart crowd in. Now, McNamara's got to pick his head up and say, we got to get right back into it. He did a good thing, and then he set himself back by doing a bad thing. But they are playing inspired lacrosse. It is Gilliam again, and he ties the game up. Was he in the crease? No. Oh. Was there a flag? Yes. They're going to call a hold and wipe it out. Ray Gilliam with his fourth goal of the game. And Hobart has tied it for the second time at 7 off. There's Gilliam, and he's just pushing, and it's just a, there he goes. And timeout has been taken by Syracuse. With this game all tied up at seven apiece, 5.49 remaining in this first half. And here is the tying goal, and watch the strength that Gilliam has against Pratt. He just pushed, and then Pratt, he moves to the inside. They called a hold. The ball was in the air before he was in the crease and in the goal, so... Well, Dale, they call lacrosse the fastest game on two feet, but Zoberti and Gilliam saying something about speed in midair, too, and contortions and body language. Well, you get some great athletes that can do a lot of things. Five and a half to go. It's redirected back to the goal, and Randolph took a shot. Devin Arkison dumping it ahead to Rick Graham. He's got Brayton in the middle, and he goes behind to Gilliam. You know, it's funny. One of the things that uh, Ohio Wesleyan did to defeat this is use his zone defense, Dave. Here comes Gilliam again. Hobart has not led in the game. This quarter played almost exclusively in this end. If you bought a seat at this end of the field, yeah. you've seen all the action. The battle will be on at midfield now. Hobart gets it again. Michael Guy. Are oh, they going to double him? McNamara and Burke. 18 to 33. Changing directions. Irie, the rebound. Bardwell missed the open net. Still Hobart ball. Talk about furious action. There's Bardwell. He's really been a spark in this uh, attack since he's come on, Jim Bardwell. Gilliam gets it back. Now Braden. Anderson. And Darden didn't get a shot away, but the orange shirts get it back. Anderson to Gilliam. He's going to go one on one again. He's got Pratt. He had to get some help. In, and he did get help that time. Hobart keeps it for yet another offensive attempt. Darden. Simington is in there, and he and Darden keep possession of it for Hobart. Scaramazzino momentarily had the ball on the ground. He couldn't cash in on it. Braden's all alone, and he missed again. He was and also he in, the in the crease. Wow, what a flurry. Hobart just put the pressure on and Syracuse give them credit they stopped it they had a shot at an open goal on one occasion but my goodness and here it is watch Braden all alone he had to back in to catch it you see what Gyrie did actually I think he got a stick on it he really cut the angle down there he got in front and made him go wide with it I think he might have gotten a stick on it 
Down to three and a half minutes to go. Intercepted by Torgler. Ahead to Brady's got a man cutting down the middle. And a save by Gary. And a fine play and a on the shot by Mike Sheehan. And a great job of Gary getting back out and coming up with the possession. Now that's a statistic that really is telling. And you can bet that it was in that last flurry. They probably picked up six or seven of those ground balls. Mike Sheehan made, took that shot, the brother of the Syracuse All-America defenseman of a couple of years ago, Kevin Sheehan. The defense has got to be tired for Syracuse. Three minutes to go. Incredibly, we do not have Todd Curry as having taken a shot in this game as of yet. He's got the ball now. Marker is down. Delayed call. Offside. Here comes Curry giving it up. Return intercepted by the goalie, and that stops the play. Syracuse had their first man up, I, uh, I think. First attempt. Offside. Offside signal by the official Tom Abbott, who incidentally is the second leading all-time goal scorer for Syracuse. You ask, <laughs> how can a man who holds such a place in Syracuse history officiate Omar, with his alma mater involved? Well, it happens a lot in this sport. It, it really does. It's something that uh, it's something that really does happen because everybody seems to be associated with a team, whether it be a college team or a club team, at, at some time in their in their life, whether it be they went to college there or they know the coach there. So it's really pretty much a common occurrence. Jake Curran, one of the other officials in the game, actually uh, functions as an ex-officio member of the Syracuse Sports Information Department at basketball games. Another okay. official in this game today. I used to officiate, and I know that uh, it's really kind of a uh, unique, it's a unique sport anyway, but they really feel that uh, that's the way uh, they could do it. And uh, when you've got uh, good, competent officials, if you don't have a lot of them, you have to go with what you've got. That's not to say they have incompetent officials. They don't have the, enough people just in number of bodies. So it becomes difficult to try to change people and, and get them off the game where they might know somebody. It also says something, I think, Dale, about the coaches in this sport. They don't spend a whole lot of time getting on officials. Uh, you know, they, they and it's a lesson that I think coaches in other sports uh, might, might learn. They, they chirp. They get it out of their systems. But, you know, like in basketball, it seems more constant. And uh, it's interesting. It really is an interesting sport. Right now we've got an interesting game. 2.48 left, all tied up. There's Dave Urich, head coach, who's got a fantastic record at Division Three level. But as you said, both he and Syracuse, there's Coach Roy Simmons, used to being ranked number one. Neither one is the top the number one list so far this season. Todd Curry on with Chris Rossi now. 30 Syracuse, seconds. it doesn't seem like they've had the ball in a settled offensive situation for about 15 minutes. Curry, Rossi, Tom Nelson. Out top to Curry, here it comes. Saved by Randolph. Well, that's got to give Randolph a lot of confidence because Curry's got one of the hardest shots on the team, and he's got to say, hey, look, I stopped that. Uh, we're going to be able to run this penalty out. And something that... Will Schmidt now on the sideline. Up the sideline. Into the stick of Jim Bardwell. Bardwell gets by the defense. Saved Save. by Gary. Bardwell rebound. Didn't get it away. Now Gilliam, the ever dangerous Gilliam. Double. They're putting bodies on him. They're holding him. Flagrantly holding him. And he looked at the official and finally got the flag. Well, that's a real compliment to, to Gilliam because he really is uh, is getting mugged out there. But this is what happened. Barwell started it all with a fast break. Now, what are you going to do? Well, he takes the shot. Nice save by Gyrie, can't get the rebound. Bardwell tries to take another one, the ball's still on the ground. They come up with the rebound, and Gravani gets it over right there to Gilliam, and watch what happens, they double him. And yeah, this is a major league hold. Yeah, there, there, was no, there was no Girl Scout hold. Minute 55 to go. Rick Ram and Gilliam. And Graham again, set play. Gilliam feeding the back door, saved by Gary, and he covers up. Beautiful execution on that play. Now with a minute and a half to go. Can Syracuse break this tie? Well, what they want to do is not make a mistake. They, they get it to get O'Donnell down. in the middle of the field. 
He'll want to give it up. They're going to put a lot of pressure now. They're going to calm down. Curry will have it. And Curry gets it. Got He's him in midfield. Changing. He's got all sorts of room. Curry, they give him room against that shot of his. He takes it, and Randolph didn't see it, but he saved it. Yeah, absolutely. Look what I got my stick on. Peter Bennett back to Randolph. Ahead now, they go to the defense. Under a minute to play. Marcuson getting it back inside to Gilliam. Gilliam being Burt. poke checked by Burt, who's got better speed than Pratt. And Curry is going to match up with Gilliam. Now he leaves it for O'Donnell. Graham comes on. Ralph has come on. In the face. Gilliam being checked by O'Donnell this time. Feeds to Bartlett. Curry with a save. Oh, he came up big on that one. Here comes Curry. 20 seconds to go in the half. Curry, killing time off the clock, 15 seconds. Diary, will he cheap it downfield? No. 10 seconds. Now to Donahue. With seven seconds, he looked at the clock, I think. He feeds it front Zilberti. Oh! Hit the and that's the end of the oh! first half. He hit the crossbars. The first half comes to a close. And a fired up Hobart team streaking toward their locker room as Hobart and Syracuse depart after 30 minutes, all tied up at seven apiece. And we'll be back right after this. Well, if you've watched any part of the first half, I think you'd have to agree it has been as billed. 7-7 tie at halftime. Hobart and Syracuse toss out the divisional alignments, toss out past history, recent history. When these two get together, Dale, it is really a war, and uh, it's been a game of momentum. Momentum shifts. Syracuse got the first three goals, then Hobart got four of the next five, then Syracuse got three in a row, and Hobart came back with three. Syracuse twice has had three goal leads, and each time Hobart has come back to tie. The Statesmen have not led in this game. The individual story is Ray Gilliam, who has four goals, and uh, Gary Gate has three for Syracuse. We'll be back with more of our halftime activities right after this. 7-7 Seven -seven is the score at halftime. Hobart and Syracuse. Dave Cohen along with Dale Dry Poulter as you watch it here on Super Sports from McCaw Cablevision in Syracuse. And Dale, I don't know if there's a key to this second half, but uh, the momentum has really shifted back and forth. It really has, and uh, I'm amazed that uh, Syracuse did such a great job of defending that flurry at the end. Uh, Hobart tied the game up, but at the end it went back and forth, and uh, uh, Jim Guyrie's been playing very well, I think, for Syracuse. Let's look at some of the highlights in the first half, and there were many for both teams. We begin with Gary Gate, number 38. Yeah, he'll bring the score up to 5-4. It was an assist from Mapes, and they really had uh, Hobart shifting, and they really didn't know what to do, and they put the pie the goalie, Maxwell, who was later replaced. The next goal is Gary Gate. He's unassisted. He snuck in from the sideline. He saw him do it once before, and there's just a left-handed shot. Once again, it's Maxwell, and that made it 6-4 for Syracuse. Gary Gates win the story for Syracuse. He has three goals, but for Hobart, Ray Gilliam. Uh, Gilliam, they, they've done everything but really shoot him. He's been all over the field. That's his fourth goal right there, and he is just uh, putting on a show, and you can see why Coach Simmons said he's definitely one of the best attack men, if not the best attack man in lacrosse. Well, the saves... Unofficial totals at the half are definitely in favor of Syracuse, but Hobart taking more shots, and uh, Hobart made a good switch to their goalie, Al Randolph, and Randolph came up big with a couple of saves. Yeah, he seemed to really pick up some momentum. Uh, also, the two man-up goal situations for Hobart, they took advantage of it. Syracuse has only had one opportunity, so uh, the penalty is definitely going for Hobart, and Syracuse forced to really put the body on Gilliam. We'll be back with a second half face-off in just one minute. We've seen Hobart dominate the faceoffs, especially with Tiny Crawford in the game right now to begin the second half. Hobart will not have Crawford facing off. Faceoffs 11 5 in favor of Hobart at this point in the game, and that, that can be a factor. Bill Durgill out for his first action, facing off for Syracuse. Ball down, Kavanaugh chasing it. Oh, that's off of Hobart. Now it's Kavanaugh's ball. And it was Mike Ralph on the faceoff for Hobart. Kavanaugh finds Curry. We had Curry for only a couple of shots in the first half. And quickly he goes to the left-handed shot, and it's wide, but the Orange will keep it. Back up by Syracuse. Nelson, number five, there to back up the shot. 
There's Todd Curry. And now Zilberti gets it into play quickly for Syracuse. Overshoots Paul Gate. He had the very first goal of the game. Paul Gate, number 39. Very strong. And with good balance, as you see right there. He had to get rid of it. Shoveling it for Zilberti. And it's uh, partially deflected and now taken away from Mapes. But the Orange will keep it. Joey Ryan in the cage for Syracuse beginning of the second half. It's a little surprising considering how well Gyrie played late in the first half. We'll have to check that strategy out and ask why later because I thought Gyrie played very well. Maybe they want to give him a rest. Gyrie is not injured. He's on the sideline talking with Matt Palin, who is injured. Gordy Mapes, a bounce feed to Kavanaugh. Clark actually got a stick on that and, and, and knocked that out of Mapes' hand. I saw with Kavanaugh. And yes. he scores. He beat Matt Torgler and then he beat Al Randolph. And Syracuse again Syracuse into the lead at 8 to 7. Kavanaugh's second goal of the Rick game. Kavanaugh. And on the season for Red Kavanaugh, Kavanaugh, number nine. Watch Kavanaugh will get the ball on a just unassisted. He takes it low and he bounces it right over number 46. And that really, uh, Randolph didn't get much help from his defense. They let him really come in. Now the important faceoff. And again, it's Tiny Crawford out and gets Bill Durjo. Todd Curry in there. He missed it and he took a hack at it and missed that as well. Gilliam. Now to Gravanti. Tom Gravanti waits for his team to. Oh, they get passed it to Crawford. As Crawford headed toward the bench, Gravanti threw oh, it to Clark. him. Clark, nice and save. Clark did a great job of keeping it in. Now Syracuse. Playing as they did at the beginning of the game. Making things loose happen. And free. Chris Burt up the sideline for Mapes, taking advantage. Durgil's open in the middle. They didn't spot him. Instead, it's Nelson. Tom Nelson. Well, they're going to change again. They really. Up top to Curry. Curry's going to go one on one. He blows by two. He feeds inside. Score. Nice feed by Curry. I think Zilberti was the final recipient, and he left handed it. Pass Randolph. Syracuse makes it cool. And once lead. again, Syracuse Four scoring five. in bunches. Up by Number two five. now, nine to seven. Um, Fast no, break, unsettled situation. Six, There's the, oh, beautiful. Six, Just nine, really nice. Curry. Dave, you know how hard Goal it is to put five. the ball? No, that, that's almost six, like uh, shooting a 180 degree Curry. angle. You got to reach that stick Curry. around. He put a little English on it, and it went. John Silberti gets the goal. This is a nice matchup with Durgo and, and Crawford. And the faceoff, new man in the game for Syracuse, Keith Owens runs it down. Now they want him in there because he's got such great speed and he's fresh. And ahead they go to Gate. Back to Durgil, picked off by another Syracuse man. So Birdie. So Birdie has it, gives it up. We're going to get one of the Gate brothers in. Let it be Gary Gate. So Birdie got the goal, his second of the game. Nelson behind. Played by Peter Bennett. Now Keith Owens, junior college transfer. He shoots, and Syracuse keeps it. And they almost got the goal as Owens' shot was gathered in by Arkansas. And I think they said that Nelson was pushed into the crease. Tiny Crawford departs. Now well, Syracuse now a chance to pick up some momentum, 9-7. And they stack up out on the crease, and they leave Nelson. There you'll see as the camera pans. There you go. There was the stack, and now they break. Who's got it? It's Mapes. Yes! Into the cage. Gordy Mapes with an easy shot, but he used his speed to get to the right spot. Al Randolph does not look as confident as he did. That was not a hard shot. Now, granted, it's difficult to do that, but he just he's just got to come up with those. Let's see what happens. There's Mapes. And he didn't get much help, but there he went down low, and the ball still trickled in. And Gordy Mapes has his first goal of the afternoon. Syracuse has rebuilt their lead to 10-7. to seven. See how quickly that went. Two minutes and 45 seconds. It's now Syracuse up by three. I like this matchup out here with Crawford and Durgel. About 400 pounds of 
faceoff man out there. They were deep in the mud last year at Geneva, even though it was a beautiful day, and they dug a hole. You know what they've Gary got? Gary Gate is in there badly, along with Matt Torgler, and Hobart gets it. Yeah, that's off of Syracuse, but one thing you notice that they've got is uh, they've got Owens in there, and he really gives them the speed, and if he comes up with that ball, he's long gone on a fast break. I think that's why they've got him in there on the wing. I'd estimate this crowd to be about three to one in favor of Hobart. If you divided this crowd into fourths, only uh, one fourth of it is, is Syracuse. Hobart, of course, lacrosse is the sport at Hobart. They take a big following on the road. And this is the game, I think, for them. Regardless of all the national championships, this is the one they won. They'll have Cornell later in the week, and there's Anderson scoring. Malcolm Anderson scores for Hobart. And it's now a nine, a 10 to eight lead by the Orangemen. Ryan did not have much of a chance to get that. Hobart Let's see. By number There's the pass. Anderson. And you see Anderson all by himself. And it's 36 feet. Six up and six across. First goal allowed by Joey Ryan. 10 to eight is the score. Syracuse is not trailed in this game. It's Ralph out on the faceoff. Against Bill Durgill. Push. Yes. Hobart gets it back. Durgill can't believe it. He warded, they say. So they catch Durgill on a ward. You can't use that free arm to move the defensive man or his stick. So right now it's 10 to 8. And James Simington giving it up to Anderson. Scaramazzino is on him. Scaramazzino falls. Anderson comes in, tried to feed it in a crowd to Brayton. A lot of white shirts there, but they can't yet come away with it. Burt has it. Behind his back, intercepted by Anderson. With Symington and Gilliam. Anderson, high and wide. Hobart keeps. You know, this is nothing against Joe Ryan, I, I, but with Gyrie's experience and having such a good first half, I'm just curious as to why he's he's not injured. He seems to be standing right on the sideline. There's Joe Ryan, who has some experience but has not played much this year. Nice check by McNamara. Ball down. Badwini battling in there. Oh, and a hit. Braden is dumped by O'Donnell. Hobart keeps possession again. Braden, number 40. Let's see what happens. Whoops. Yeah, if you're within five yards of a loose ball, you better keep uh, your eyes open. Gilliam working from behind the cage. Intercepted or deflected. Now Michael Guy runs it down. He's got Graham open on the right side. Doesn't see him yet. He's going to take the shot with the screen. And Gilliam's behind the cage, so Hogarth keeps again. Now let's see who picks up Gilliam. This game was 4-3 to three Syracuse at the end of one quarter, 7-7 seven, seven at the half. Now Syracuse leading at 10-8. There's a familiar matchup. It's Gilliam and Pratt, Dan yep. Pratt, way outside to Mike Guy. Guy working. And being denied <laughs> momentarily. Oh, looking for a ward. Syracuse is looking for a ward. And it's taken away from Gravani by McNamara. Boy, they're really go all, over himself that, in. all over that ball. And that's what he did. Taken away by Gravanti. Scores. That's a bad clearing pass by McNamara. He let himself get boxed in and then had it intercepted. And Gravanti worked his way in for the goal. Syracuse 10 and Hobart 9. One of the things they did is when McNamara had that ball, they just put a lot of pressure on him. They did not just let him watch what happens. Well, you won't see it there. You'll see the goal, which, of course, is the, I guess, the important part, but really put the pressure on McNamara, and they are contesting it and not going to give up anything like that. And Syracuse, again, poor pass, and that cost him a goal. 10-9, 10-08 left, third quarter. Jake Curran trying to get that ball positioned between Durgill and Crawford, two groundhogs. You see a push. I think uh, Crawford pushed. That uh, faceoff goal to Syracuse by virtue of the penalty. That makes it uh, 
14-8 in favor of Hobart faceoff wise. So Durgil got his job done that time. And we have not seen a lot of him uh, this year. We saw a little bit more of him last year, but he is getting a lot of playing time in this game. Paul Gate is on number 39 with Rhett Cavanaugh, Todd Curry, Nelson, Zilberti, and now Gordy Mapes. Play by David Kernick. Each team has used two goalies. A chant of here we go Hobart as Rhett Cavanaugh feeds it to Gate, shovels it to Zilberti. Out top it goes. Cavanaugh way over the head of the uh, man back there, Gordy Mapes, so they call it a shot. Oh, it de definitely was a shot. Now here's Mapes again. He works that same move and same result. Gordy Mapes. 11-9 Syracuse, the identical play that he scored on moments ago. Well, he took Kernick around the same way that uh, they've had success with Gilliam. And boy, you let him go Syracuse that far and not able to get a stick up on his stick. <laughs> <laughs> and then he takes a shot from Torgler, I think. But uh, Syracuse lead now 11-9. Crawford's back out for Hobart. I think both teams have settled on this faceoff combination for this quarter. Phil Schluter in the game now for Syracuse. Durgil and Crawford working it. Durgil picked it up, lost it. Anderson sneaks in and takes it away. That's great. Here comes Malcolm Anderson. Schluter from behind, can't get him. Gilliam checked away. And Joey Ryan had it, and I think somebody stepped in. Interference. And he, did he have possession? I don't know if he did or not. There's Jim Guyery on the sideline, a man who I thought played very well in the first half. And we'll see the ball down out of the stick. And Ryan gets it right there, and then they interfere right there. Meanwhile, down the other end, Syracuse looks to pad their lead. It's two goals. Zilberti feeds, shot, deflected in the air, and Zilberti runs it down with his speed. Now Mapes, will he try that same move again? Flag, hold, 30. He was heading in that direction, was Gordy Mapes. Oh, to get a slash out of that. So Syracuse will be man up for one minute now. Will Schmidt. That's their second man up opportunity of the game. Schmidt and Peter Bennett come on in this uh, man down situation for Hobart. There's an exchange of sticks. Matt Torgler. One thing uh, that they were not pleased with uh, so far this season has been Syracuse's man up has not been efficient or as effective as Coach Simmons would like. They've only had, this is their only their second Hobart opportunity, Hobart. but they will be up for a minute. One minute, slashing on number 18, Chip Arvin Tidy. Paul Gate, Curry. Rossi, Mapes, Zoberti, and Gabe. They continue in that direction clockwise. Now they go back the other way. Up top and intercepted. And taken away. Regained, however, by Nelson. Uh, Tom Nelson back to Todd Curry. Feeds in close to Gate. Cross the box and out of bounds intended for Rossi. That was the problem as we saw last week of poor passing. It's not been a real problem today. That time it cost him a man up opportunity, at least for the time being. They are still up. We don't know how long for, but once again, zero for two. Not able to take advantage of that man up. Eight minutes, 15 seconds to go, third quarter. The 11 9 Syracuse lead. He's going to get in the box, and they're going to get their man out of there. And Syracuse, Scaramazzino takes it away. Now well, they released the penalty, but Syracuse got the ball back. Joe Ryan looking to clear. Ryan exchanging with Dan Pratt. Gilliam's going to stay back there. And in the middle, here's Todd Curry. Changing directions on Bardwell. He's got Donahue up ahead on the left. Kavanaugh on the right. It's Curry to Kavanaugh. Zoberti against Peter Bennett. Zoberti works in for the shot. Saved by Randolph. He lost it. He regains it. This is it to Arkison. 
They're making Arkerson work to get it out of there. Intercepted right in front. So Bernie doesn't get the goal. The save of the game by Randolph. And after the shot, so Bernie took Bernie a cruise stepped in. through the crease. Now they got to shake that off. Syracuse does, and of course, it does a great job of picking up Hobart as the ball. Is that Arkison? Yeah, Arkison. Poor pass. Ball is down. There's the interception. Nice save. Got that stick on it on the left side. Randolph playing well now. Chris Badwini coming back for Syracuse. Will he give it up or take it in? Sends it back. They work it in close. Cross the goal mound. Nelson. Well, you can only do that so many times one-on-one, -on -one, and he got Zilberti, but he couldn't get Nelson. Cross cage feed, and Syracuse Nelson had a Coleman lantern set up there. He'd been there so long. Number five, assist number three, 40 mates. Watch him. Uh oh, where is he? And it's Syracuse 12. That time he made the goalie commit before shooting. That's the way you want to do it. Syracuse leads 12 9. Schluter and Guy fighting for position while the faceoff is going on. There they are at the bottom of the screen. Ah, Drigel and Crawford. A subplot. And it's Michael Guy with it. Look at him Durgel's bring that stick gonna in. going to bury him if he can. Well, he brought he that can. stick in. You don't want to pick up a slash. Drigel doesn't want to be silly with that. And uh, Guy was appealing to the official, and he had the ball taken away. He's fortunate that Clark of Hobart's able to pick it up. Michael Guy put his oh. mind off the game. Uh, doesn't do any good. Randolph had to go high to take that redirected pass. Six minutes, 20 seconds to go, third quarter. Here's the way they come up field. Devin Arkison in the middle of Michael Guy. Schluter, number four. Now to the left wing. And Gravanti. Going to put it in the stick of Gilliam. The ever dangerous Ray Gilliam. Four goals in the game. Shoved away. And knocked away. And regained by Bardwell. Pratt, nice job on Gilliam that and time. And Rick Graham now. Back to Gravanti. Working there against O'Donnell. Shot. And scoring. <laughs> Little hesitation move by Tom Gravanti. And it's incredible. This game goes three goals one team, three goals the other team. Watch what happens. Watch how Gravani sneaks that ball. O'Donnell's on, does a nice job defensively. But watch, now you're Ryan. See what happens when he brings the stick and now you don't see anything, you don't see anything. Now all of a sudden, boom! There it is, before you even get a chance to react. That ball is at you at 70 miles an hour and over your shoulder. Goal by number 12 on Gravani, unassisted. And once again, we have Durgil and Tiny Crawford, the subplot. Crawford coming out of there with it. <laughs> you don't think this game is physical. You're mistaken. Sadly so. As Will Schmidt gets dumped. Skip Darden working in for the shot. He scores. He beat Keith Owens and then he beat Joey Ryan. And it's now 12 to 11. You talk about momentum, and this game has had it, and Ryan just not able to stop that one. And he is out, and Jim Guyery back in doing a little stretching, a little zen down there. Right now, the faceoff's now 17 to 8 in favor of Hobart, as they really are getting the wing people on the ball. And Skip Darden has his first goal of the game. Syracuse gets this one, and Mapes is up with it. This game was tied 7-7 at the half. Syracuse got three in a row. Hobart two in a row. Syracuse two in a row. Hobart two in a row. Zilberti gave up a shot They're, attempt. And they doubled Zilberti. Somebody's got to be open. Now they were changing on the fly. They want to get Turgill out of there. 44, he'll come off, and they'll send in Donahue. He's on now. And he's sneaking in. They don't see him. Zilberti. Played by Arkeson. 
Now it's Pat Donahue. Oh. Made his move, didn't take Ooh. his shot. He drew a couple of people. Four and a half minutes, third they, quarter. They got that stack out there while well, they got two people on this side on the wing. That's a good move by Donahue, and that's a score. Pat Donahue. Syracuse has a two goal lead now at 13 11. Syracuse goal by 26. He took Bardwell up top. Watch what he does to Bardwell. There's the shot. Excuse me. That was not Bardwell. That was Will Schmidt, 45. And once again, the goalie Randolph beaten. Maxwell started this game for Hobart. Faceoffs once again, 17 to 9. Well, Hobart. And Symington on the faceoff that time. It rolls down to a Syracuse man, Ooh. O'Donnell. Symington out of England. Durgil's in there, throwing his body around. Fast break, Phil Schluter. The defenseman gives it up to a wingman. They get it in close, and a score. The fast break, and Gordy Mapes comes back. And credit Schluter with having a lot to do with that goal, although he will not get an assist. Absolutely. Watch, there's Schluter. Sir, he dumps it off. 14 goals. Scored by number three. Well, watch Mapes. Corey One move. Mapes. Ooh. His third goal of the game. He went by Arkison, 41. Faceoffs now. Assist, Being dominated a bit by Hobart, but Syracuse. Just counteracting it by playing tough defense, getting the ball, and taking advantage of the situation when they can. Back to back goals by Syracuse. 14 to 11. Again, a three goal lead. <laughs> and if form holds up, Hobart will come back with a couple now. Schluter and Crawford's all over him. There's Owens. No. Darden running crazy legged. Oh, now it's Tiny Crawford. Watch, the fans love him. He's going to crank and fire. It's wide of Guyry. And both teams make multiple changes now. Gyrie back for his second tour of duty in this game. We might see Maxwell yet again in the nets for Hobart. <laughs> we'll see everybody but Matt Palin, probably. Gravanti and Guy and Anderson and Darden. Well, you know, this game has been played at such a pace. You've got to get people in there with fresh legs and give your people a rest. Low shot, score! Uh, Gilliam just took that one from downtown. Showing Murray he is Gilliam versatile. Gets his fifth goal of the game and his first this half. That is the fifth goal of the game for the McCoy. Watch Gilliam because he is about 15 yards out and he just takes a crank. And boy, you can't give him anything. He took that, he got that in the short side. Well. Two goal lead for Syracuse, 318. Back to the subplot. Two different players, however. Kirk Pratt and no, Tony it is. Crawford. It's Crawford and Pratt. And it's Pratt coming out of there with a face, but he can't maintain control. Down he goes. He'll draw a push, I believe. Hobart fans don't like that. They've got a legitimate gripe. It looked like his momentum brought him down as much as any Hobart player. Paul Gate comes on, number 39, with Rhett Kavanaugh. Tim Clark is on, number 34, and Schmidt and Bennett. Chip Arvin Tidies, number 18. Syracuse with Zoberti. And they're really taking him out way up Kernan. high. Zoberti with great speed, scores! Well, you've got Kernick way out there on him, a defenseman. And he really didn't get much help, and Zoberti just oh, took him all the way 15, out and brought him all the way back in, and by the time they jumped him, he had too much room to get the shot off. Watch, this is Kernick way outside with him with the big stick, but look at the speed. Zoberti beats him. Where's his help? Where's his help? Too late. And that's a tough situation to be in when you're one-on-one -on -one out there. So Syracuse pays him back a little bit with the Gilliam one-on-one. -on -one. They use Zoberti, and they victimize Kernick. 
Faceoffs now 18 to 11 in favor of Hobart. Third goal of the game by John Zilberti. Looks like he's regained that offensive firepower he had a year ago as a freshman. Ahead to Matt Torgler. Under three minutes to play in this third quarter. Torgler must have been out of bounds. He was. This game has been played at a furious pace. If you don't think conditioning, well, I'm sure both teams are conditioned, but if you don't think you get tired, you have to go out and try to run this a couple of times and see how, how much conditioning it takes. And change of direction, not only running. Look at that change by Kavanaugh, feeding it inside in the crowd. They overpass, but Curry's got it. That's a lethal weapon when he uncorks it. He took a high shot, didn't go. Syracuse retains possession. Curry again. Arkison, Curry off the screen, the moving shot. And Randolph up ahead to Kernick. Kernick may decide to fire. Oh, he changed directions and Kavanaugh hit him up. Syracuse running it down in a hurry. Zoberti feeding the back door and beyond Tom Nelson's reach. Well, that's too bad. They really did set that up nicely. Kavanaugh really took him down, but they could not. They made it. <laughs> John Desco, uh, you can you can see, is not pleased. And we'll see what happens uh, on the replay. There is Kernick, 44, ball down, taken away from him. And you see the pass attempt coming up here as they go it across and back across, but they missed the pass. John Desco really giving Todd Curry an earful on the sideline as Roy Simmons is in between them, hand on Todd's shoulder. As great a player as he is, can always take coaching, right? And Hobart Save. shot is saved by Gary, but Gillian. So dangerous, has the rebound. He oh, feeds no. the crease, and just like that, Rick Ram has a goal. And he runs and hugs Ray Gilliam, who's on the carpet. I saw that coming. I saw Graham break, and Gyrie did not have a chance as Graham worked loose, and they fed him about three feet out from the crease. Watch. There it is, and nobody on him. He worked without the ball to work himself free, and Gilliam found him. Well, you make a good point because that's so important to be able to work without the ball, and there you see the result. Oh, the joy by as they pulled it within two again, 15-13, one thirteen left in the third quarter. And here it is picked up by Durgill. Let's see what Curry's going to do. He's got it now. Oh, boy, ball down. Durgill should have My guy knocked it away. Let's see what Curry has in store. The clock is on the field in the last minute of this third quarter. So is Donahue. They want to settle it down now, and they want to get a good shot off. Give it go. Curry scores. I wonder if that's what the coach told him. Well, I think he told him to put, a, put it on the ground. And he also told him, when you're open, take the shot. And now it is 16 to 13. Works without the ball and a beautiful give and go. And Todd Curry with his first goal of the game. Kavanaugh, 16 from 13. Makes the score, Syracuse 16, Hobart Up by three with 46 seconds now. by Curry, assist to Kavanaugh. Goal number 14 of the year for Todd Curry. Syracuse. And there's Syracuse's Rhett Kavanaugh picking up another ground ball. They get Schluter out, Durgel out. They got Curry coming in. They may not. They may not pick up Curry. They don't. A push. Ball is still alive. That was kind of a free pass. They knew that they would get 30-second penalty at least on a push. I think that's what the call is. Yep. So 
why not try to feed the goal? And they did, but the pass went awry. Oh, our penalty on uh, number 27. Now 20 seconds left. If Michael you can't get a good Sheehan. shot up, don't forget if you can hold on to the ball, there's a man up situation. You can start the second, uh, excuse me, the next quarter without the without the face on. You realize, Dale, we had 14 goals in the first half, and in this third quarter now, we've had 15 goals. This is a def oh, wait a minute. They've, they've changed this to a slash. So that's a minute penalty. So that may change some. I think that's what they call. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what they signal now, slash. So Syracuse, you may see if they don't get off a good shot, they'll want to keep possession of that ball. Ten seconds left. Intercepted, deflected, five seconds. Uh, he'll just run around with it now. And Gordy Mason is going to run down the clock. Well, you know, even Syracuse. if you bounce it up in the air, it's not possession. They do have possession. That's the end of three. Syracuse, Syracuse will have it as we begin the fourth quarter. 16 to 13 after three. And we'll be back right after this. Let's start now in the fourth quarter. And Syracuse does indeed retain possession. It was a one-minute slashing call. And John Zilberti has it. Syracuse leads by three against Hobart. The Statesmen have never led in this game. Syracuse zero for three in an extra man situation or man up. And they have been working on that. Curry on top. Jump feed, not handled cleanly and lost by the Orangemen. Shots 33-26, saves 22 for Syracuse, 11 for Hobart. Ground balls 28-22, man up goals as we said, Syracuse now 0 for 4. Faceoffs had been a trend for Hobart, Syracuse has come along at the end of the third quarter and right now Hobart's going to have to redirect, they want to clear the ball, Syracuse putting pressure on, that's Nelson, now they're doubling the ball. Michael Guy being hounded by Zilberti first. And Nelson secondly, Al Randolph in the goal on one end, Jim Guyry on the other. Good Rick ride. Ram now, Scaramazzino and Burt converge on him in the Middle East spot to Arkansas. Arkansas is open. He dribbled the ball, lost the break attempt by Hobart. Now he goes back on side. They get it to Ralph in the middle, a bad pass. Badwini is there to shield for Scaramazzino or Megan O'Donnell, and now it's Chris Burt. And the give and go, back to O'Donnell. He gives it off to the shorthanded Zilberti. Gordy Mapes behind the cage to Nelson. Picks it off the ground, works one-on-one. -on -one. Nice and job. Good speed in the corner there by Scaramazzino to keep it in possession of the orange. And Bennett got in front of that shot to deflect it, change the angle, and uh, he did a nice job for Hobart, but Syracuse retains possession. As you said, Scaramazzino over there, 19 coming out now. Let's see if we can see that save. There's the sneak, and somebody got a stick on it. May have been Randolph. Way outside they go to Scaramazzino. Now to Rossi. They're and even now. Gordy Mapes and Zilberti have each played a fine game today. Little fire plugs. Ball deflected. Goalie's out of the cage. It's open. It's on the ground. Where is it? Somebody stepped in. Zilberti was in there. Lots of excitement when that ball is on the ground in front of the crease. They always tell you to clear it off. That means pick somebody out and knock them down. Didn't get that far, but you see the goalie came out and then the ball down in the crease and everybody starts picking a body. Danger sweep there by 41, Arkison. Randolph, far sideline. Here comes Rick Ram. Scaramazzino's in front of him. Down in the corner he goes. They want to get at the stick of Gilliam. Watch the activity in front of the net. Graham trying to spin for an angle, or Michael Guy is. Instead, he's taken down and he taken away. Where's the open man? He's in close. Score! That's the kind of fast break lacrosse that we have not seen out of Syracuse. The defense caused it to happen. They took part in the passes. They got it down to an offensive man and they zapped it in the goal. And now at 17 to 13, this equals Syracuse's biggest lead of the game. Watch the passing. Nice turn by Zilberti. They get it upstairs, across, and down. And Zilberti 
gets an assist as number five, Nelson, put it in the hole. Really the kind of lacrosse Syracuse has been known for in recent years, certainly. And the kind of lacrosse we haven't seen very much so far this season, well, at the least in the home games. Big Stick Minis did their job. They took the ball away and started the fast break. We got a little hold here. Now, you got a four goal lead, but you know you can't sit on a day because you know how quickly things can change. There's 12.35 left in the game. They have to still be playing with intensity and they have to be playing with a lot of abandon, I think. That's what's gotten them this lead in this game. This is far and away the most goals allowed by Hobart this year, 17. In their opening game loss to Virginia, they allowed 11. Burt doing a nice job. And he forces an errant pass. It's, however, recaptured by Hobart on the far sideline. They want to get it to Gilliam, and they do. Ray Gilliam has five goals in the game. Same game. He's going to go one-on-one, -on -one and the they help. double. And he still gets a shot, and he scores. He has something else, isn't he? Number six. You know, from this... From this uh, altitude where we are, you can really see things happen, and you, you can see it right here because now they've set up. There's Pratt again, and they've got everybody else on the other side, and you got to say right now, help, help, and there's the help. He comes, watch him turn inside, and even gets another shot off, and just, what a super job by Gilliam. He is without a doubt one of the best men, if not the best in America. After the faceoff, Red Kavanaugh face scoops it for Syracuse. 17-14 is the Syracuse lead. Now they don't want to let him get any momentum back up. Giorgio's going to go off. Kavanaugh, great change of direction, trying to split the defense. Gets it back. He ought to give it up, and he does finally. To Mapes, looking back door, hitting the Outside. side of the cage. Tony was going to throw it to Nelson on the far side. Here now here go. comes Anderson of Hobart. It's been like this all game long, up and down. Darden sneaks on. Semington. Darden on the wing. Darden, nobody finds him. Now they do as he comes in. Kavanaugh picks him up. He runs through a couple of screens. Gilliam has it. Here we go again. Bardwell's on, and number 23. five. Different side this time. Gary, where is it? He gets it and he holds on. This time it was Gilliam in the crease. You know, he's been taking him around from that left side of the crease. As you look at it, the right side, but he went on an opposite side that time, but was in the crease. Watch him. He's been coming towards the bottom of the screen. Now he moves. He roll dodges, trying to get the one-hand shot off. Nice save once again by Guy, who I think is having a real nice day for Syracuse. 17 to 14 is our score. Jim Guy, 50-year senior out of Annapolis. Goes up to midfield. Quickly they get it ahead. Here's one of the Gate brothers feeding Zoberti in the crowd. They take it away. Marcuson. And he goes to Graham. McNamara gets back in defensive position. Nice job. Paul Gate. He's going to Trying get to spot him in the middle. He gets it ahead to his brother, Gary. He feeds to Zoberti. They've tried that numerous times. It hasn't worked. Let's see what the call is. In the crease again? Offside. Technical. There was the flag, so Syracuse would be up for 30 seconds. Syracuse unable to cash in on a man up. As a matter of fact, on the last play, they had a poor pass, and they are not running their extra man well this season. I know Coach Hobart. Simmons is not pleased, and there is going to be a timeout for Hobart. 6,852 watching today here at the Carrier Dome. We'll be back right after this lesson. Jim Guyry is in the nets. Matt Palem is out of action for about four weeks with a sprained knee. 17-14, Syracuse with the ball and the lead. They have never been behind in this game. Todd Curry to Chris Rossi. He faked and he lost the ball and he's trying to run it down. And uh, it is Gordy Mapes coming out of there with the ball. There's another, he got him on the head. A delayed call coming up. Can Syracuse capitalize? Intended for Zilberti in close, they can. Well, we'll get another opportunity because that was a slash on the head, and they'll be up two men. So this will be their fifth man up opportunity 
right now. They're zero for four. One minute penalty on Hobart, number 43, Peter Bennett slashing. So now they are up two men. One minute slashing. We don't know Hobart. how much time left on the other penalty. Still five seconds remaining. Five, we'll find out. Good ball movement. Rossi Craig scores. He went down low. Will Schmidt, 45, was playing defense. He slid over, but watch him. He's got too much momentum, and he one hops it past Randolph. Now 18-14. Rossi gets goal number four on the year, and a big one. We talked about spreading the scoring around also at the top of the show, and they're, they're getting a lot of goals out of different people. Of course, some people got three. Zilberti. Face off, Durgil and Crawford. Lost by Hobart. Quick stick back to Nelson. Nelson gets it. Durgil's open on the crease. He and Crawford doing a little pushing and shoving there after the face off. Now Zilberti spots uh, Donahue coming on the field, but doesn't give him the ball. <laughs> Durgo wants to, he wants to get the ball. Gordy Mapes. Kavanaugh is coming on. Played by Mike Sheehan. Tom Nelson. Nelson backing in. Mapes, can he find an angle for a shot? He can't. He was looking. Will Schmidt. Up to Randolph. Randolph. And ahead to Arkansas. Nine minutes to go and a four goal Syracuse lead. Curry's got the hole there, the open space for the fast break. Arkansas. off. Burton. Arkansas. Low shot. Save. Bardwell and Pratt. Somebody's open and it's Gilliam. Now they pick Gilliam up. Bardwell. Where's the ball? Somebody's playing without the ball. Bardwell playing without a stick. Bardwell paid for that shot he took. McNamara trying to come out of there. McNamara gives it up nicely. Good transition game. Now Todd Curry. Now they're going to take their time. They're going to get their people off. Now before, Hobart's been jumping the ball when Syracuse has been getting their people on. Gate comes on and Owen, number one. And Curry takes him way behind. Dave Rolfe, 31 on him. And valuable time running off the clock. It's down to eight minutes. Gordy Mapes outside to Gary Gate. Now Keith Owens. Syracuse using a couple of fresh bodies at this point. Running some time down. Mapes reversing on Arvin Tides. Foot save. Randolph took the angle away, but Syracuse gets it back. They killed about a minute on the clock. Uh, this is important. Not only did Syracuse get a shot off, they wasted some time. They got the ball back, and that's very important. Nelson, five, take it behind. And they pack up the crease a little bit. And it's put back in play now. John Zoberti will work one-on-one. -on -one. Why not? He's got tremendous speed and quickness. Gonna get doubled and even triple. There were three men there trying to stop him from moving in. Now Mapes. Arvin Tidy's way out. Mapes gives it up. There's Owens. Good move as he shakes free of his man. Feeds Mapes. Oh, is it in? Yes. Great play by Keith Owens to spot Gordy Mapes. Absolutely right, Owens. Unselfish, might have been able to rationalize taking the shot, but he just gave it up. There's Owens, one, watch, see, he breaks away. Now he gets doubled, he right away keeps his head up and gets it off to Mapes. And now Syracuse is enjoying their biggest lead of the game, five goals. Giorgio and Crawford again on the middle of the field. Faceoffs now stand 21, Hobart. 15 Syracuse. Tiny Crawford 
Gets another one for the Statesman. Durgill tries to wrap him up. Crawford pays the price. Cross check on. I think it's O'Donnell. <laughs> He's trying to explain to uh, Abbott that he had his hands together and it was just a kind of a hand check, but they saw him come up with a stick. You know, a five goal lead uh, is comfortable, but you know, Dave, how quickly the momentum can change. And if things go as they have been, we could probably see another momentum change. Gordy Mapes. With all of his four goals this half. Syracuse, man down. And what's this whistle going to be about? Uh, I think a ball, boy, uh, ball got away, so. Man up opportunities for Hobart. This is their f uh, sixth opportunity, and they have converted on two. Two of five right now. We'll see if they can do it on this one. Intended for Gilliam. He's being yes. forced to run it down and expend that energy. He took a shot on the head. Might as well take another shot at him now, right? Well, what's going to happen? Yeah, okay. They, I was going to say, you, you don't want to get another penalty. And uh, right now, there'll be two men down as Burt is going to take a seat. Slash City here. Burt takes a seat. And we'll see if we can pick up the slash. See, oh yeah, there you go. Plants that one off his skull. Ray Gilliam has had six Hobart goals. Gordy Mapes has had four by Syracuse. That's Gilliam. And here's Gilliam looking for number seven. Rattle on a couple of pipes. And Dan Pratt cheaps, cheaps it. it out of there. Picked up by Mike Guy. Six minutes to play in the game. Gilliam again. No, saved no save. by Gary. Two more big ones. Hobart mounting the pressure. Guy Three. again. Woo! And he throws it Give into it the crowd. Take a ride. And he's going to get a nice round of applause as he stopped. He's two men down and stopped three shots. And they're going to keep the ball over there. There's only so many times you can do that. Let's see, they come out on Gilliam. They're only down a man now. Syracuse man down, they were two down. 5.37 in this game. Gilliam on a screen. Man down defense playing very well. Syracuse. Killing viable time on the clock. A shot and Gary deflects it high and wide again. We've been handed a note that as Syracuse should hit the 20 goal mark and they'll need one more goal. It would be the first time in seven years since 1980 when Syracuse scored 22 goals in a game at Hobart. There's Gilliam again. Making the low shot was Guy. Now Hobart into a scramble mode, and there's a goal by Dave Brown. 19 to 15. Well, Hobart swarming, scrambling, and coming up with a goal. Good point. Swarming is the good word for All it. They had the crease really crowded up, and uh, they were able to get the feet in. And actually, Gyrie probably screened a lot by his own people, and he's upset with himself, but he had three saves before that that he should be very proud of, and now... Off the faceoff, Todd oh. Curry ran it down and then lost it. Hobart looking to score quickly now. Gilliam lost it as well. That should be off of Gilliam. It is. Boy, Gilliam is a superb, uh, superb lacrosse player. And now he's looking at Dan Pratt. That's a little bit of a switch. 
Up ahead, they get it to Curry in the midfield. He does so much of this, lugging the ball across. Yeah, that's stuff you don't see in the in the stats, Dave, and he has done an excellent job. Syracuse has had no problems clearing. They had some against Cornell, but I'm not sure that that wasn't due to the just kind of the late part of the game when they really had lost their confidence. Syracuse leads by four. Kavanaugh sandwiched, gives it up. They redirect to the goalie. Randolph is out of the cage. He's only got four seconds in the crease. He got out just in time. And they want to get over and play Sheehan. And they whip it down to Mike Sheehan. Sheehan wants to give it up, I think. He took a shot with a big stick and was smothered out of the point. Under four minutes to go and a three goal, four goal Syracuse lead. <laughs> I think uh, Scaramazzino hit it with his hand. Is there a whistle? Yeah. So loud, it's tough to hear the whistle. Yep. Mike Sheehan is the player who was down. Yeah, Scaramazzino hit it with his hand. Watch number 19. Watch him bat it. Get out of here. <laughs> you know, probably wasn't a bad play. It stops the fast break. 3.53 to go. Dave Urich on the sideline. I can't, uh, I can't imagine it. When they played Ohio Wesley in a loss, that zone defense really had them confused. But... Man for man, I don't think there's a Division Three team. Well, we'll see in the playoffs, but they're going to be very, very tough despite a couple of losses that they have had. And Gilliam going outside, third. switching hands. Curry made the save. And now Scaramazzino has it. We're down to three and a half minutes to go. Hobart scrambling out of the cages. Diary. He's coming up big now. Ahead to Chris Badwini. He had a man streaking in at the cage, Nelson. He shoots and it's wide. Good time to take the shot. Unsettled situation. You got some backup. Hobart trying to get down. You know you're going to get the ball back. 3.15 left. I don't know if he shot this right handed or left handed or what. He went right handed. Right -handed. There he goes. Chris Bedwini, senior out of Vienna, New Jersey. Now, three minutes and 10 seconds to go. Will Syracuse run some time off? Donahue stands outside. Curry cut to the cage. Little motion offense now by the Orange Men. They are really moving out on that crease, moving a lot of people, a lot of cuts, a lot of picks. Donahue giving it up to uh, Curry and well, back gonna, to Donahue. They're going to take some time off the clock, you're right. Zoberti's open, and they get it to him. Down to 2.45 to go. Now they may, if they take it outside the box, they could get worn. But in close, Ooh. Zoberti running around. Boy, is he tough to get a hold of. Now they go outside to Donahue. All right, now they get warned. They got to get it in that box. Now it's in the box. They got to keep it in the loose possession. In the middle, Zoberti shoots. Taken from behind, in front, back to Zoberti, or to Nelson. Up to top, Curry faking his shot. We'll run some more time. Got to keep off. it in the box. Wait. And a timeout oh. taken by Curry. I was going to say, I, if he put his foot on the line, it would have been, but uh, timeout. We'll be right back. Omar, 15. Dave Urich with some coaching to do here in the final two minutes and 11 seconds, and his team is down by four goals. Hobart has never led in this game. A four-game winning streak on the line. And play back in. Todd Curry. I'll take some time off. Tim Clark is with him. And Curry, boy, what a pair of legs he has. I run mean. forever, can he? They can do that. Just keep running it back and forth here. You're inside the goal area. Minute 45 to go. Kavanaugh cut to the crease. They're not concerned with getting any more goals, I don't think, at this point. Curry looking to get his shot away, perhaps. Now a minute and a half to go been a well-behaved crowd. But definitely into the game for both teams. Predominantly a Hobart crowd. And Syracuse is running the time off now down to a minute and 10 seconds. Zoberti changing directions, giving it up to Curry. 
Donahue. One minute. Gordy Bates. And down to 45 seconds, doing a masterful job of running this clock down. At the old North Carolina Four Corners, David, in basketball. And now Curry, they're down to 30 seconds to go. And he scores! Todd Curry with the exclamation point. The 20th goal, the first time since 1980 that Hobart has surrendered as many as 20 goals in a game. Well, Coach Simmons may never wear his hat again, Dave. And so the exclamation point by Todd Curry and Syracuse will defeat Hobart this year here in the Carrier Dome. Donahue on the faceoff with Symington. And the clock is winding down now. We'll let the fans count it down for you in the closing seconds. Ten seconds. Four seconds. And it's all over. Syracuse defeats Hobart 20 to 15. And the Orange men up their record now to 5 and 3. Hobart suffering the defeat. They go now to 4 and 3. We'll be back with more on today's game right after these messages. We're back in the Carrier Dome, and Syracuse has defeated Hobart 20 to 15. Our guest following the game is the Syracuse goalie, Jim Guyrie. And Jim, I wonder what the uh, entry is going to be in the Guyrie Diary after this game today. Uh, we did a, overall, we did a real good job team-wise. Uh, we know what we had to do You know, after we got beat last weekend by Cornell. Well, what did you have to do? Well, we just had to get our heads back on straight again. You know, after getting beat that bad um, and getting dominated that bad, we knew we had to come back. Tactically, did you change things around? Uh, no, not really. We just, um, well, we had a, just a good solid week of practices, and we knew what we had to do this weekend. And Hobart was a great team. They came in here, they were ready to play. And overall, it was a, it was a great game all around, and um, we just came out and we did, did what we had to do. How, how did you feel? I was just going to say, how did you feel? I mean, Palom was in the goal. He got hurt in practice. You came back. Uh, <laughs> gee, you did a great job. But uh, how did you feel walking out there? Did you, uh, did you have any uh, you know, like trepidation about being back in there? You hadn't been there in a couple of games. I was a little nervous when I went in there, but... Um, I just, try, I just try to relax and not think about anything but the game. And uh, just went out there and just played. Did you was, get back uh, in your rhythm? You seem to get right back into it easily, I thought. Um, I had a, I've been working a lot this week with Coach Desco and um, also John Zaburi has been working with me a lot this week. And uh, so I just, I just wanted to work hard as I could. Jim, you made, back a, in there. you made three uh, super saves in succession, and we're going to take a look at them now. Um, what, what was the key today against, uh, here's a save against Gilliam, I believe. What was the key to your success? Um, I really couldn't tell you. I just, you know, my defense played great, and um, there was a lot of just an all-around good team win for us. Mm -hmm. How important was was getting out of the gate quickly for Syracuse, getting those first two goals? Um, you know, for any team, whether it's you know Syracuse or whoever, it's it's important that if you can jump on a team early, you know, you might have a you have, you have a little added advantage right there. So. Uh, we yeah. were a little bit surprised at the beginning of the second half and Joey Ryan's in there after you had what we thought was a fine uh, first half. Was that by design? Uh, yes, sir. The coaches, uh, they decided that they would split time with uh, Joey and I because uh, Joey's been playing very well all week also, and they wanted to give him a chance. Mm -hmm. Well, that's also as you go down the stretch here, if, uh, if anything happens to you, you're down to two goalies. You've got to get somebody has got to get some experience. I assume that would probably be the reasoning behind that, right? Yeah, Joey's a great goalie, and, um, you know, i got all the confidence in the world in him. And, um, you know, I just... He went there. I know he can do it. What do you think of Ray Gilliam? He's a great attack, but I hope he gets all first team All American. He's just outstanding. He just the way he drives the pipe and comes around and shoots. It was, uh, you guys was really, good. you guys really murdered him a couple of times, and he still came up with a goal. It must be really tough. You must think, oh no, when he gets that ball behind and starts working behind. Uh, we were. They told us to be aware of it beforehand. We were um, during a week of practice. They told they were warning all the defensemen about him how he comes around. 
And, um, you know, it's kind of tough when you got a good determined athlete like him to come around the cage and try to stop him. One final question, Jim. Does a goalie always sound like you do after the game? <laughs> uh, Horse throat? I don't know. Maybe he does. I couldn't tell you. Thank you very much, and congratulations. All right, thank you very much. Nice game, Jimmy. Thank you. Jim Guyry, the winning goalie as Syracuse has defeated Hobart by the final count of 20 to 15. And with a win, Syracuse now goes to 5-3 and three on the year. And we uh, advise you to be on the lookout to check your local listings for the time and place of the next Syracuse lacrosse game, the Orangemen against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers.